What's going on, guys? And welcome back to another virtual episode of Real Fans Real Talk. I'm your host, Eric Sanchez, a.k.a. Legend of Two Games. As always, I got my homie with me, Trip Young. We got a special guest today in the building as well, host of Combo's Court. You, you're you not new to the show anymore, Combo. You're family now, so that's oh, yeah. so what we got to say. Yeah. Now, nah, but fellas, how you guys doing today? I'm doing great, man, and I'm glad to be here. It's always great talking basketball with you guys, man. Absolutely, absolutely. We got a lot of great topics to get into. Um, Trip, where, where you want to start in regards to basketball, man? Because I know it's been a busy week for you uh, yeah. on a number of different topics. But should we start right at the draft or we, should we start at free agency? That's how hectic this time has been. You know, let's start at free agency just because, first of all, you know, you guys at home, y'all know I still got two years left under my, my contract with the Lakers. Uh, or, you know, at least at least another minimum of two years. Maybe it may extend, depending on how we feel about it, depending on when Bronny's ready to um, come up to the, to, the, to the league and whatnot. Um, but we might as well just start there because we got a couple of pieces – one in particular that I that I I, I really liked for two reasons. Uh, one, well, let's start. Let's start there. Tell me, tell me the move you like most because there's so much movement. Yeah. And combo, I want you to go next. Let me know what you guys, what signing so far has really piqued your interest. All right. So, all right. First of all, I love the Dennis Schroeder trade. Uh, six men of the year uh, candidate last year. So I think he's going to be good coming off the bench. Somebody that can can score the basketball and handle handle the rock. Bring over a three and D guy, Wesley Matthews Jr. I think he's going to be fit right in with this uh, lineup. But the, the the one piece that I liked the most was the Montrez Harrell signing, and the reason why I liked it so most because it was so it was so hilarious for me the fact that you know he left the Clippers to come join the the, the winning team. If you can't beat them, join them kind of thing. And you know, so not only like I said, he's going to be on the Lakers roster. He will no longer be on the Clippers roster. And there was one other signing that wasn't for LA that actually made me the happiest in regards to this whole situation. And that was Rajon Rondo going to Atlanta. I was so glad that Rondo didn't go to the Clippers and, and, uh, and, and it helped him out, make them, make them that much better. Cause I think he still has a lot left in the tank, especially for a playoff run. And I thought he would have been a, a really good fit for them had they signed him. but you know, he wanted that check. So he went down to Atlanta. So I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy about, uh, about the move so far. Uh, we extended uh, Caldwell Pope, so he'll be back. And the Lakers aren't done. They, they got they got one or two moves uh, left in them. They're probably going to bring in a big man, uh, maybe Marc Gasol. Uh, maybe if they if they if they do a little stretching, they might be able to bring in in Whiteside. Um, and then they're going to bring in another wing player. And then we're going we're going to get back to it, and we we're going to work on repeating. What about you? Combo. Who, who were you most interested or intrigued by when you saw who they were going to or what what their new team would be? Well, Lakers Schroeder was that was a great pickup for them. They needed somebody who could uh, create offense off the dribble. That's something they really were lacking in. Um, I like Shemit to Brooklyn. I think he's going to pop more with them. Um, I don't think he was utilized right with L.A. They were trying to make him like a point guard and that's not really his game. He's going to be able to have that run off screens, run around, create chaos, make threes, play defense. I mean, his defense isn't great, isn't super great, but it's, you know, it's okay. I think he's going to play a lot better there. Uh, Drew Holiday, Milwaukee, big pickup. I mean, they missed out on bogey. That would have been the same, man. They would have been tough with those two. Uh, but Drew, Drew helps them. He Hopefully, they'll play Giannis a little bit more off the ball and maybe give him some different looks. I don't think they could keep doing what they were doing. He's going to have to make an adjustment this year. Um, I like Dwight. I've heard people uh, – I like Dwight to Philly. They needed a ba- they needed a backup big. I know Joel wanted him there. That was big. So that's just some of my thoughts, man. There's so many moving parts here. It's insane, man. Uh, I did an IG, Le- IG Live Friday with my guy Pierre from Through the Wire, and, man, just things kept popping up out of nowhere, like John Wall wanting to leave Washington. It's just insane what's going on, man. You think yeah. it's make it to the finals? Um, since they weren't able to complete the bringing over um, Bogdanovich, do you think they can st- still make it to the finals with just the additions of uh, Drew Holiday being like the, the best guy they brought in? Man, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't bet on them to win the finals, but I think I wouldn't be surprised. I, I, I don't think they can win. I'm just saying, make it to the finals. Because remember, they haven't been to. I don't know. I like, I like Philly better than them. I like Miami better than them. Even maybe, even in even the Celtics, you know, so I don't know about that. I like Drew Holiday a lot, but I think Bogey and Drew Holiday would have put them over the top for real. Like, so we'll see what yeah. develops. I think I like a few teams in the East better than them right now. Yeah, I, uh, 
I, I like Philly's moves and, and the, the names you guys mentioned are all very interesting. Um, the, the Laker move to get Montrez, it'll be interesting to see how they try to play him with Anthony Davis uh, because we know Montrez has some limitations, but I definitely like Schroeder for them. They needed another ball handler. Um, they needed somebody who could take that pressure off Braun, especially with this uh, hectic turnaround of, you know, the season starts in a month. Um, I like that move, but I really like what Philly did because for so long we talked about how could uh, Ben and Joel coexist. Well, now with the amount of shooters that they brought over there, they can coexist now. You know, you, you get rid of Horford, um, who just wasn't a fit there, but you bring in Seth Curry, you bring in Danny Green, you bring in Dwight to be a big off the bench. I really love Tyrese Maxey. Um, he was one of my guys I was spotlighting in, in the in the draft. So I like the moves they've made a, a lot. And I actually like them more than Milwaukee, as you mentioned, Combo. Milwaukee with bogey, I thought, could have been really scary. I mean, think about yeah, it. Yeah. Last six to eight minutes of a game, they could have trotted out a lineup of Brooke Lopez, Giannis, bogey, Drew, Drew. and Chris Middleton. Like, that's that would have been tough. a really... Yeah, now that, that's that's nothing but shooters on the floor for Giannis to be able to go to work. And, and then it's addition, a super modern lineup. It's a modern NBA lineup. Sure. Very modern lineup, and yeah. it, it alleviates the ball handling. Now Giannis doesn't have to be the primary focus every offensive possession, so... I would have loved that move for him. I like Bobby Portis for them coming off the bench because I think he's going to be a better fit than Robin Lopez um, for them. But Bogey, to me, would have put him over the top. But all in all, to me, what Philly has done so far has been great. Yeah, Seth Curry was big for them. Um, they're, they're trying to go back to what they were before, just put shooters around those guys. They kind of had it at one point with J.J. Um, they're just, the Philly's just talented on the court, head coaching, and front office. They're, they're talented on all three levels, man, so... You know, they got Ben and Joel on the court. They got Doc as a head coach, and they got Daryl in the front office. I mean, you got the talent. Now we just yeah. got to figure it out and make it work. Yeah, so, Philly, Philly has upgraded you. every major aspect of their organization this whole 100%, 100%. season. 100%. They have to stay healthy. That's going to be the biggest hurdle for Philly um, because we know that Embiid and Simmons are both injury prone. I'm, I was I was glad that they were able to get out of the Al Horford contract because it just didn't work. And that's not to say that I think Al Horford is done because I think he still can contribute a lot. Just Philly just wasn't the place for him. Um, but I, I do I do love the additions, man. Like they 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 got those shooters in, like like you mentioned. Uh, do do you think we still see one of those guys get moved, even with the additions that they just made? Combo, go. I'll let you go first. Combo. So which team is this? Philly. Philly, do I see who? No, I I mean, well, first of all, I would not move them if it was my decision. And uh, there's a chance they'll move one of them, but I, I wouldn't like to see them. I'd like to see them run it back. I'd like to see them run it back with Daryl there and Doc there. So they need one season with both of them. Dame? What'd you say? You move Ben Simmons if you could get Dame. No. No, I wouldn't. I agree. I, I wouldn't either. Um. One season is probably going to be the key. They're going to keep them together. We got to remember Daryl Morey's uh, track record. He loves pairing superstars together. The, the eight years that Harden was there, he did nothing but try to find that, that superstar form. So the only way I would see him, the only way I would see him trading one of them is if he was getting a Harden type player. Um, but to your point, Trip, I wouldn't move Ben for Dame because Ben is younger and there's just more versatility in regards to what you could do with your lineup. Um, Dame's a great player, don't get me wrong. But I, I just don't know. It, you can't build the roster around Dame the way you can around Ben. You know, with Ben, as we're seeing now, because he's built like a four but can handle the ball like a one, you can just put a bunch of shooters out there and let's say, like, let's just go to work on teams. So mm -hmm. I don't think they move either one of those guys, at least not not this season. Doesn't work Definitely out. not this season. I think they, they want the one of them. Say, say that, that again? again? If it doesn't work out this season, let's say they, they don't make it out of the second round again, this season, you think this is happening? Definitely. Well, season one it, of it's gone. It depends on health and it depends on the results. Like if they get to the finals, uh, they lose to the Lakers. I would run it back again and see what you could do in the off season. If one of them gets hurt or both of them get hurt or, you know, the chemistry isn't there again, then I might think about it, you know, but right now they're building really well around those two players. And I like what I like. I like what I'm seeing. Yeah. It, it would depend on how it ended. Um, if it ended like it did two seasons ago where they lost on a lucky shot to Toronto, you have to say run it back, right? Like you, we know that was kind of a fluky yeah. shot. Uh, this year, injuries kind of prevented us being able to see what they could look like in the playoffs. Um, but if it's a total collapse where they just get outplayed, then yeah, you, you probably move on from one of those guys. 
Um, I, I've been up to thinking and, and combo and I've gone back and forth on this. I don't think Brent Brown really had the respect at that locker room, you know, um, and I think that's something that we, we may see change this year. I, I want to see if MB is going to come in in shape and be committed to being the dominant force he can be because we know when Embiid is on his game, he is the best low post player in the game. I don't think there's anybody better than him on the block when he's on his game. I think as, a, as a scorer, for sure. Yeah, a scorer. Doc, I think, is automatic. Like, you know, you, you got to put respect on, on Doc Rivers' name as soon as he steps into the building. So I think, yeah, at least from that standpoint, I think we'll see a huge difference. You might even see Embiid and, and you know what I'm saying, getting in the best shape he's ever been with, with, uh, with, with Doc Rivers. Yeah, I heard he helped recruit Dwight. So he's, he's making moves. He's making moves. Yeah. We'll <laughs> see. I see Dwight stay with the Lakers, but. You know, it is, it, it, is, it is what it is. He definitely put in work for, for the Lakers uh, this past season. So he deserves to, to have opportunity to go wherever he wants to go. Try well, to I, think, I, think, I think the Lakers, um, you know, they, they went for more versatility. And that's why you bring in Montrez, you go after Schroeder. Uh, they want to be a little more versatile, you know. And they, and they saw it in the finals, too. I, I don't think Dwight had the same value to them in a finals matchup than he did in that Western Conference. You know, in the Western Conference against Jokic, you needed an athletic big man like that. Yeah. That's the role Montrez is going to have to fill now. Yeah. Yeah. Not as good on defense, but better on offense and more versatile. Oh, yeah. He's definitely not as good because uh, Joker was giving him the business the whole second round. Yeah. So, and he's not <laughs> And he's not the lob threat that Dwight is. So, you no. know, it's just different. It's just different. Yeah. That's, That's a fact. It's going to be interesting to see. In Actually, you know what? I mean, Dwight might be a piece that fits better around star power than, you know, Montrez. Uh, especially the way Dwight bought in. Not 30-year-old Dwight, the current Dwight and the way he played. is really yeah. good player to build around star players. So uh, we'll see how this Montrez thing works out. But I think it'll be good, and I think they're going to be better this season. And I think That's, they're the favorites. That's a great point. Learned a lot this past season as well. I think he humbled himself a lot, and I think that's going to carry over very well going over to Philly and working with Embiid and having 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 that 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 roster around him. I think he's going to do well, in Philly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, I it's, think so it's too. A, it's a great point about fitting in with guys, and and speaking of uh, complimentary pieces, trying to fit in with stars. Joe Harris just signed a, a massive extension with the Nets, about nineteen million dollars a year. Combo, you you were big on them um, before the end of the season, so I want to start with you. What are your thoughts on the signing, um, and and ultimately, how does he fit on this current team as it's, as it's constructed? Yeah, so they could use Shemit and Joe, kind of like how Miami uses Duncan and Tyler, just have them all running around crazy around their two star players. I had Seth Part now of the Athletic on my show. It was a little while back now, but he said. Not only they need Joe Harris, they need another Joe Harris. They need two Joe Harrises. So, I mean, it didn't surprise me that they re-signed him. He's an important piece for them. Now they got Shemit as well, and I think it'll work really well. I, I like what they're doing over there. I like what they're building. It seems like all these teams are actually getting better. So it's going to be interesting to see how this NBA season shakes out. Yeah, I, 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 I definitely agree. I, I was glad they, they were able to re-sign Joe Harris. I didn't think they were going to be able to do it. He got because he got he definitely got paid a nice little check to uh to stay in Brooklyn, but I, I just think that with Durant and Kyrie, like you definitely it's, it's it's a blessing to be able to have a shooter of that level right next to you on on the wing because you know you know Kyrie once he starts dribbling the basketball going inside the paint, Joe Harris is going to get those looks. Same thing with with, with Kevin Durant, he's going to get those looks. So to have a knockdown three point shooter who's probably top five in the league. Right now, next to those guys, I think it's going to be great. They also added um, Jeff Green as well. Um, I like that addition too. Nicely, exactly. Nice veteran. Um, you know, I, and you could go small ball five with him. Yep, exactly. You know, Durant at the four. That's tough. Exactly. Yeah, that was the first thing I thought when they signed Jeff Green. That that that's perfect for a small ball lineup, uh, depending on matchups on that particular night. Exactly. Right. All these picks, I kept like in my mind. I just kept thinking as I'm watching free agency go down though, like I'm literally this is I'm saying to myself, yeah, this is shaping up if everyone stays healthy, LA Brooklyn in the finals. Yeah, I, I could see it. Uh it's, it's but, possible. Uh go ahead, combo. Yeah, I could see it. It just the East is a lot tougher than uh people might think. 
And the West might not actually be as good as people might think. It might be a lot closer than people think between those two conferences. So uh, we'll see what happens. Philly's going to be really good. Miami's probably going to be good again. So Celtics yeah. are going to come back strong. Uh, it's going to be tough. But and even when, in you the- have, when you have KD on your team, and I love Kyrie, I love Kyrie's game. When you have KD on your team, you always have a chance because that guy's the cheat code, you know? No, that, yeah, that's the cheat code. The, the West is a little more top heavy. Um, where the East has a little more balance. I think we could name four or five teams in the East that have legitimate shots. Um, in regards to Joe Harris, I want to get back on that real quick. I, I think it's a little bit of an overpay, but obviously they, they need that shooter on the floor. And it may signal the fact that they know they're not really in the running to add that big time third star. We heard the rumors about trying to go after Harden. So taking on uh, or, or re-signing Joe Harris at 19 million kind of takes you out of the running for that type of trade, I think. Um, which I'm I'm okay with um, to to make it to the, to make it to the finals, even win a finals. I don't think they need Harden. I think with K- Kyrie and KD and the rest of that roster, they can definitely make it to a finals. Um, you know, right? So- and that's what. No, no, that's what I was gonna say. I'm, you're I'm, saying there's I'm, better balance, you're right? I was gonna balance. say I think I think if you're a Nets fan, you should feel comfortable about that and knowing that look, we still have good assets like Dinwiddie, like Harris, like Jared Allen to fill out this roster that gives us more depth moving forward. And, and if you do feel the need to make a move for a piece, it doesn't have to be a mega piece of, of like James Harden. It could be another quality piece to fit in with this, with this team. Um, but yeah, they, I, I still think they have a lot of question marks, man. I, I still got to see it on the court. I still got to see how Steve Nash is going to handle t- uh, late game situations and, and, and what type of offense they're going to run um, before I put them ahead of, as you mentioned, Boston, Philly, um, Milwaukee, Miami. I think, yeah, Miami. I think the Nets are in that mix, but I can't put them clearly above any other team there because we just haven't seen it on the court. Well, here's my question. Can you put any team ahead of all the others? I think if, if we did a pecking order, I mean, you could make a legitimate case that Boston. I knew you were going to go Boston. I well, knew I'm, I'm, Boston. I'm going, I'm, I'm going by the teams. My, but my it's funny that I do that. I do. It. Of course, because I, I like I like their team a lot. <laughs> I understand. Um, I understand. But I look at I look at this, this season in particular. Boston's gonna, too. By the way, paying Pritchard is tough. Kid is yeah. tough. Yeah. Uh, and and Boston made a very good move with Tristan Thompson, who I think is going to yeah. be very good for them late game situations because we know they lack size. Bam Bam might have not have hurt them as bad if they had Tristan last year. For sure. Oh, and, and I mean then Daniel Tice goes to the bench where I think he's probably more comfortable coming off of the bench. So, yeah. uh, in a season like this where everything's going to be so fast paced and condensed. I'm looking at the teams that already have chemistry. Those are the teams to me. I think are gonna are gonna succeed this season. Yeah, I like Collins. And uh, and there's there's breaking news on the NBA circuit because apparently this guy changed his mind. Marcus Saul is signed with the Lakers. Wow. Hold on, hold on, hold on, combo. What was we talking about before the show? What I say? I said I said they was looking. They was they was you looking. At, okay. I said you they did. Was and the that takes another contender out of the East away though with the Raptors, right? Oh, big time because Serge yeah. Serge uh, signed with the Clippers, so the veteran presence I think in Toronto is is taking a major hit. Um, and Serge with the Clippers is actually an upgrade I think over Montrez, just fit wise. Yeah, what he does what he does defensively and offensively just fits them way better than what Montrez does. Right. Yeah. Doesn't need the ball as much. More off ball value. Rim protector. Rim they need that. I mean, Zubac, Zubac stepped up and he was pretty good, but they definitely need another true yeah, rim protector. But yeah. the but the pick and pop, um, you know, potential with Serge out there is, is different. I think Serge shot almost forty percent last year from three. Yeah. So yeah, definitely, no, you're right. He's a better fit and shouts to trip. For, yeah. For Colin. For Colin. Yeah, that, that, that's a, that's that's a solid move. Again, that's another big body for the Lakers to replace Dwight. And he's and he's versatile. As well, and that's what one thing that you were saying earlier about the versatility of Dwight and him not having that, and so why he was he had to sit out most of the finals because you know he wasn't going to be able to do nothing out there with all his shooters and, and Bam playing the five. You know, Gasol, even though even though I do think that uh, he got LeBron's Defensive Player of the Year award, he was a Defensive Player of the Year, and he's a he's a he's a solid veteran that's going to come in and play that position. I, oh man, this that's that's a big signing. For the, for the Lakers. Come, John Wall wants out of Washington. He seemed upset that uh, GM recently said they're building around Bradley Bill. He's the face of the franchise. Do you guys think he gets moved before the start of the season? And if so, where do you think he could land? 
Listen. How about the Knicks? Please don't. On behalf of the Knicks delegation, we are. Please don't. I, I, I don't even like the Knicks. Like they need a point guard. Please, no, stop. And, and, and the Knicks are horrible. They have been. Do you guys look at Austin Rivers as a point guard? Don't bring no, John no, no, Wall. He's not, Sorry. he's not the, no. Austin Rivers is, is a. I don't, me personally. So if, if we go, let's stick to John Wall and we'll get on the Knicks. I have thoughts on it too, but go ahead. And this is why, Combo, you were actually on the show the last time we spoke about John Wall and the stuff that he was doing in Brooklyn. New York is the last damn place that John Wall needs to be playing basketball at. <laughs> That's too much stuff for him to get into. So keep him far away from anything in New York. Send him to the West Coast somewhere. Don't bring him to the Knicks. Sorry. The guy's been hooping, man. You see the videos. Next thing you know, he's going to have a drill album out. He's going to be in the streets. Wow. Ah. Don't, don't, don't bring him to New York, man. I don't know. He might be outside, but he, I don't know. Oh, you know he's going to be outside. You can't be in You know he's going to be outside. I'm sorry. There's no way. New York is not a city where you can come here and just you stay. I mean, right now, maybe because of COVID. But even with COVID, because that happened when we was in COVID. And he was so, all up in the whole... So, Full of COVID. The one thing I will say is he brings a lot of IQ to any basketball team. He's a very John Wall, smart player. John Wall is an amazing player. I don't doubt that. Yeah. Only reason I wouldn't want him on the Knicks, like I said, because I'm I'm a little scared off by the injuries and how long it's going to take for him to get back to peak John Wall. And, and also, they didn't take Tyrese Halliburton. So if they would have took Tyrese Halliburton, I said maybe John Wall wouldn't be the fit. But since they went with Obi, they really need a point guard, man. They I don't do. know. And I, and I think... I think I um, drafted RJ Hampton when they had the 23rd pick instead of drafting a guy that may never come over and play for them. Well, they didn't keep that guy. That guy was part of the trade for Emmanuel quickly out of Kentucky. Um, but when I first heard about the, the kid, uh, Bomaro from Argentina, I thought the same thing until, you know, I, I saw later on that he was part of the trade out, but Bomaro got that, some potential. He got, yeah, but he's gonna he's gonna stay in Argentina at least for two years. I think. Plays. Nice vision. He has the potential to be a good point guard. Really nice handle for his size. Just I like think he stays Bomaro. in Argentina for two years, though. Oh, no, I think he already. I think they already announced that he's that he's uh yeah gonna he, overseas. He's gonna play overseas this year. Yeah, he's he's staying. So I think the Knicks are going after a vet, and and it was that was one of my fears with with uh, Tibbs coming in as a head coach. As much as I love Tibbs. They're going with a vet. I think the sign of Austin Rivers today is a prime example of that I think Frank, uh, along with some other pieces, are going to be part of a trade going out because we just got too many guards, not even point guards, just too many guards. We already had RJ. We signed Alec Burks. We got Dennis Smith Jr. We got Frank. Now we got Austin. They got guards and forwards in New York. <laughs> guards and forwards. And, and no, you know, between. got OB topping. I'm, I'm okay. I, I wasn't thrilled about OB. I did want Tyrese uh, on the night of the draft. Well, you, my friend, are correct. But you wanted, but I do like Obi. I just like Tyrese better for the Knicks. That's all. I agree. Yeah, I agree. But I, I like Obi. But again, now you got to bring in a veteran point guard because for all his high flying and all his capabilities on offense, it means nothing if you don't have a guard who can get him the ball. Did the Knicks see Combo's top five available? Did they watch? Did they? Did they? They got to look at Combo's top five, top five available because Tyrese Halliburton was on there. They they didn't take what? him, but they they weren't the only team because I I was a little shocked that he lasted all the way to number twelve. Well, that's why I'm yeah. with, oh, I, I'm th with the mindset that the Knicks are going to actually try to make a move and bring Russell Westbrook over because they didn't draft a point guard at all. They could have. And so, and now you definitely need a point guard. So I'm thinking, all right, well, maybe they'll, they're actually going to try to go bring Westbrook. So who's out there? Who's out there? As far as point guards that they can get? There's a couple. Um, if you're looking to make the splash move, it's going to be Russ. If you're looking to make a, a steady I'm going Me personally, I'm going with John Wall over Russ right now for the Knicks. The only thing with John Wall is he- Me personally. Playing like two years though. And if yeah. Trade, Russell Westbrook is not really a point guard at this point. Yeah, I but know. No, he's, when he, your point guard cannot make shots, it puts your team at a big disadvantage. But we haven't seen John Wall play in two years. So what, what realistically, you would have to think about what am I giving up for a guy that I haven't seen play basketball in two years? Yeah, and he's and that's Westbrook, true. And Russell did average what well, was he averaging thirty at one point, right? Yeah, Russell Westbrook can still he can still score. He's, he's more just, like a forward in this NBA though, or a small ball five. Well, listen, I mean a Houston center, a uh, Houston Rockets five, yeah. Definitely a Rockets. <laughs> I mean, he's well, not really a point guard at this point. Uh, you, but, if the choice is between Westbrook and and John Wall, you cannot go John Wall because you don't know what you're going to get from John Wall. And it, like first of all, he IQ. It, he, 
Yeah, but it may even be a situation where he has to play himself back to even getting into being an average player. Like, we really, like, two years is a long time off, and this is not John Wall, 23, and he missed two years, and he's coming back. You know what I'm saying? Like, this that's a lot. If you, what are you giving up to bring John Wall over? That's a huge contract. They would have to take, yeah, they would have to take pennies on the dollar for him. You know what I'm I that's think the Knicks are going to regret not taking Halliburton. I mean, yeah, but that's, that's, the Knicks regret not taking a lot of people. So, that's nothing. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm just. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're only they'll only regret it if if Obi is a complete bum. Like if Obi no, is like Obi, Obi's gonna be good. He's gonna be good on I offense. Know. Defense is the issue with him, but he's gonna be good on offense. But I think Tyrese is gonna be, you know, obviously they don't play the same position, but he's gonna be the better player. And on top of that, he's it's a better fit. I think Tyrese has more upside and he's the younger player, but we also yeah. have to remember that, you know, when teams yeah. are drafting, it's all it's always about what's what they feel that is best for them. I think I think Tibbs had a big play in not wanting a rookie point guard. I, I really do. Tibbs is not gonna try to mentor and and he doesn't have the patience for a rookie. That kid point is guard. super smart though, man. And he's they said he's the best interviewer ever. A lot of a lot of GMs and head office people said he has he's the best interview they've ever seen. So we'll see. Well we gotta look at then who if if, if he doesn't want a rookie point guard then we gotta see, cause I mean, cause after that, like we're like, it's gotta be, it's gotta be Westbrook then if that's the case. Cause I really, I, I think, think if, him taking a chance on 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 John Wall. I mean, I know, I guess they they brought in Austin Rivers. So I don't know how, if you count him, but I don't even really count him like that. Austin Rivers is a bench player. We know that that's he's okay. best suited to come off the bench. Like I said, if if you want the splashy move, it's gonna be Westbrook. If you want the smart move with it with a vision towards the future. Then you take a veteran that's on a one year deal similar to Mike Conley or um Kyle Lowry and yeah. you bring him in on a one year as the vet um who helps out whatever young point guard you decide to keep on the roster or if you have your eye on somebody long term. I don't think John Wall's in play because if I'm the, again if I'm the Knicks, not that I'm I'm doubting his talent, I'm not giving you a, anything of, of value or substance for a guy who hasn't played basketball in two years. I'm not I, I'm not doing it. Yeah, that, that that's that's my that's fair. Because he could I mean listen. And I and I hope he does. I hope John Wall comes back and he can get back to all star form. But two years is a long time. And if you think, all right, we st- you still got to get yourself back in the game shape. We saw it took Paul George a season really before he got back to being Paul George, even you know before the side shots on the side of the basket and all that. But outside of that, it took him about a year before he really got back to to playing like a like an, an all NBA talent. So if it's a situation where now we're gonna take a whole damn near a whole year for John or John Wall to look anything close to John Wall, and we we didn't what do we give up to get him? Because we're gonna have to give, up, give up anything. Yeah, it's got to be again. It's got to be pennies on the dollar yeah. because we don't know what he got. Uh, that's a great point, as you mentioned. Trip, mentioned trip. You don't know how long it's gonna take him to get back, um, and then you don't know if if he runs the risk of getting injured again because he's trying to overcompensate for the injuries he's recovering from. Um, you know, with that being said. We saw it with Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson was was rehabbing and recouping to get back, and now he's out again. Yeah, and he's about to say so he's about to miss his season now. He's a little he's a little younger than, than John Wall. He's, like, he's a little he's older than John Wall. I he's old, excuse me, than John Wall. Yeah. Now. But he's a shooter, so jump shot is the last thing to go. He should. I think him coming back, we're gonna see a difference in, in the defensive side of things because I don't think he'll be guarding the best player on every team coming back off of a two-year hiatus. I don't know if, not that he's the most most athletic guy, but he's a, a top defender in, in this league. Um, he can guard the better perimeter players in the league. It sucks for, for Golden State um, because I thought they, you know, prime, were primed to, like, kind of come back and at least get right back to the Western Conference Finals. Now, whether or not I felt like they could beat the Lakers, that's a different thing. But I think a healthy Golden State team with the addition of James Wiseman, um, I think that they, they'll be right back in the Western Conference Finals. But when you take away uh, Clay, Game 6 Clay, that's a huge loss. Um, I think that this year is going to be very telling for Steph and the, the, the level that he's at because he's going to definitely have to step up in order for them to make a deep run into the playoffs. But I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I like I I love the pick for Wiseman. They didn't trade. I would have I wouldn't mind seeing them trade the pick away and get a veteran big and some other stuff in there. But since they wound up keeping the pick, I think that Wiseman is going to do very well with the Warriors. It's a good fit for them. 
I would agree. I mean, I did a mock draft with my guy, Max Van Auken. We only did the top 10, but uh, it was the same three that I had. So I think all those were the right picks for those top three selections. I think with the Timberwolves, I mean, you already got D'Angelo Russell. I didn't think they were going to pick LaMelo Ball anyway. Um, and then you already got Carl Anthony Town, so you're not going to pick Wiseman. So Golden State, if anything, they might have picked they might have picked Edwards if you're Golden State, but you know what I'm saying the center position is the one position that they've always kind of been been weak at. So to bring Lamelo Lamelo or Halliburton would have been interesting with the Warriors, but I think James was the better fit. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So yeah, I, I agree. Um, I think the top three kind of went how it was it was going to go. Yeah. It's the picks I would have made if I was the decision maker for those teams. So, you know. Yeah, Wiseman makes the most sense there. Um, he won't. He'll have the least amount of pressure of anybody who went in the top five, um, because he won't be their number one or two scoring option. Really, they'll they'll kind of work him in. He'll he'll figure some things out. I like that they added Kelly Oubre to that team as well. Most definitely, I think that's a really good fit there. But um, Combo, I wanted to ask you in, in regards to you know the top three picks. Were you a little concerned when you heard that um, that interview that came out with Anthony Edwards, where he kind of talked about basketball not really being his true passion and how he's more of a football guy but kind of settled on basketball like would, is that something because we talked about interviews and scouting guys is that something that would have scared you in taking him at number one it doesn't scare me that that's the case but I wouldn't have said that if I was him that's not something you say in an interview you know so I think you need to be aware about these interviews and you know you never want to lie but you also should know what not to say so I don't think that was a smart move by him, but I think he's a good kid. I think he's an, e no matter how athletic you think he is, I think he's even more athletic than that because he has all the eye popping athleticism. They've done tests on it. He's, he's off the charts when it comes to athleticism, the eye popping stuff. And also he has all this stuff that guys like Luca and Harden have in terms of deceleration. So is this yeah, it's a, wow. it's a, you, you always want it to be the guy's passion, but, I would still take him number one after that. That's not that's not the deciding factor to, to not take a kid, in my opinion. Yeah. No, I'm um, sorry, Trip, what you were saying? Well, one, two questions. One, I was, is he 6'3 or 6'5? Because I know some, I've seen six, him. 6'5. Six, 6'5. Then I've seen With him. With like a crazy wingspan. Okay. So, um, yeah, I definitely, and a crazy athlete. I definitely wouldn't have said that. That was a bit weird that he would say that as you're about to be drafted, possibly the number one pick in, in the NBA draft. Um, but I don't think I would be too concerned about it just because, uh, you know, he, he, even if, if it's not, I think he, he, he'll wind up developing into that. Like it's, it's the NBA. I think he's going to love it. He loves, he loves to play basketball. It might just because it's not his number one, you know what I'm saying? I don't think that that really makes that much of a difference. Um, I think he's going to, he's still going to come in and, and, and do well. I don't, I, I wouldn't be scared off by that. I saw his interview with Mike Schmitz and he looked pretty passionate about what he was talking about. If you watch that interview, I mean, he was really into it. It didn't seem like he didn't like basketball at all. So, you know, there's actions and there's words and uh, he seemed pretty passionate about what he was talking about in that interview. And how much could he yeah, have in the NBA draft? How much, you know, like that's my, my thing. Say that be, again. How much more do you love football than basketball? If you are in the NBA draft, if you will. Well, well, the NBA is the way to go. That's and that's of, what happened. You know, there's he, a lot more injury concern when it comes to football. You're gonna make a lot more money playing basketball, most likely. So I could see that, but you know, he openly admitted that he didn't start taking the sport seriously. I think until like his junior, senior year high school, because he knew that the path was easier to go to the NBA than the NFL. So I don't know what he played in in, in football. We've seen um, players start late that have done right. very well in the NBA, and that, that was gonna be my point. Like I don't I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, you know. There's certain guys who are in the league right now who have other outside interests aside from the game, you know, and that doesn't stop them from being able to perform. Um, I, I think it's something that we should keep an eye on. It's going to be interesting because Minnesota has a long history of losing. And so if that thing ain't going right, is he going to be one of them guys that's like, man, I'm, I'm just tuning this out. Like, you know, could Minnesota stunt his growth to reach his full potential? Because we, we've heard people say he could be the next Dwayne Wade. But the difference between Dwayne no, Wade, we can't do that. We no, I'm, I'm not do saying that. I'm doing that. I'm <laughs> no, not saying okay. I'm doing that. I'm just making a point that the difference between Dwayne Wade and a lot of a lot of other athletic guards is that Wade had that passion to be great. Well, Dwayne Wade had a better feel for the game than Anthony Edwards too. 
Well, Dwayne Wade also, Dwayne Wade spent a couple of years at Marquette though, right? He didn't come out at this freshman year. No, but I'm just talking like about natural feel. He just had better feel than Anthony Edwards. But I'm, I, and I like Anthony Edwards a lot, but Dwayne Wade is a top three shooting guard of all time, right? Who, oh, top four, top five, right? But Wade was also fortunate though. He was on a good team at a young age. Whereas, you know, Anthony yeah. Edwards go into a situation, if, if football is your number one, and you really aren't that passionate about basketball. You get on the team and you're in the league for three years and y'all losing for three years straight and losing bad, you know, then that might start to weigh on them. Then it's like, right. I make the right decision. Do I really want to be here? So then you might have to deal with, with those issues. If he was, it's, if he was, if it was a situation where he was drafted by the Warriors, I think he would have been fine because you're going into a winning culture. You know what I'm saying? We don't see that really where the top guys go into winning cultures. It's like it's, it's rare that those guys get drafted to, to the top teams in, in the NBA. Right, because every year we hear about guys who, oh, they're they not as passionate or they, they lack that fire. Like Andrew Wiggins is a perfect example of that. Wiggins went to Minnesota. They struggled all them years. And he always just seemed kind of like, eh, I play when I want. I'm not too into it. I'm not saying Anthony Edwards is going to do that. I'm just saying it's going to be interesting to see how, how, they, how they try to cultivate a winning culture around him because it's very easy for some of these young guys to get disinterested or is Minnesota going to bring in the right veterans around him to maximize his potential? I think physical tools, he's amazing, bro. But now, now that that little piece of an interview came out, I think we all got to pay attention to it, no matter what. All right. Question for both of you guys. And I'll give you mine as well. Who is your early pick for rookie of the year? I think it's going to be more competitive than it's been in the last couple of years. Man, it could be Obi Toppin. I, I might have to go OB top and he's going to get a lot of reps. He's a little bit older than the other guys. Do I think he has the upside of some of those other guys? Maybe not, but Obi would be a good picker for rookie of the year. I mean, Lamelo's is going to get a lot of reps. Teams um, so with hard. Charlotte. So Lamelo has a great chance as well. Um, I like those two for rookie of the year, but my two favorite prospects would be Edwards and Tyrese Halliburton. But those two guys got, uh, I know I picked a lot of guys here, but <laughs> I'd say, uh, <laughs> I'd say I'd say Obi or Lamelo. Top five in the in the draft order. Just give me all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna lean towards Lamelo. Only thing that stopped me from saying Obi is Knicks don't have a point guard, and the Knicks still have Julius Randle slotted in front of Obi. So if Obi's coming off your bench and he's not getting the same reps that some of these other guys, is Obi coming team. off the bench for them? Randle starting at the four. As of right now, Randle starting at the four. You got to start Obi. I, listen. I said on draft night, there's got to be a trade involved because it makes no sense if he's going to be coming off the bench behind Julius Randle. And Julius Randle... Just lost my lighting. Go ahead. Julius Randle, who's on an expiring contract, is either going to be flipped to a, a veteran team that thinks he could be the missing piece or he's going to be showcased so he could be eventually flipped. So Randle's got to move out the way and we got to get a point guard. So we'll see always starting at some point this season. He might start not start off right. as a starter. Um, right. Then they'll, you know, let Randall get that promo and they get him out of there. And then by all star break, then we'll see Obi step into the starting line. Correct. But I think Lamelo, Lamelo got to be the front runner because Lamelo stepping into a situation similar to John Morant. He's going to have the keys to the car from day one and he's going to have the, the ability and the freelance capabilities to just say, yo, it's my show. And y'all just going to have to just ride this wave with me. Nobody's going to stop Lamelo from doing what he wants to do this first season in Charlotte. I'm going in a different direction than both of y'all. I'm going with. Big man, that's big man in the draft, uh, James Wiseman. And the reason I say that is Naku Okongu? Oh, Naku <laughs> no, 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 I'm going with James Wiseman on this one. Uh, the reason why I say James Wiseman is because I think, uh, you know, and we spoke about this last week, Eric, he's going into an ideal situation, even without Clay, Clay Thompson there. Um, you still have Steph, you still have Draymond. That's that's a team that's a playoff team without, without Clay Thompson now whether they're the best team in the West is something different. But when you, when you have Wiseman coming into a situation with no pressure, I could see Wiseman averaging 12 and in, in, in 10 a game with, with two blocks on, on, on that Golden State roster. And, that, and that's enough to get you rookie of the year. Nah, I don't, that's not, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be flashy enough. I'm not saying, no, it is going to be flashy because he's going to be catching a lot of dunks. He's saying it's going to be straight numbers. Yeah, yeah but it, it's deniable. Not, he, he's he's gonna get the big man alley hoop lobs and all of that, so this is gonna be flashy from that standpoint. He, I don't, he's not gonna be backing cats down in the paint like Shaq or anything like that. But as long if he does 
what he's known for doing, he could easily average a double double his rookie season with a couple of blocks and then a couple of highlight dunks. And now that's the rookie of the year. I mean, he has the opportunity. He's going to be on the best team out of anybody drafted in a, in the top five, maybe even the top 10. But I think what's going to end up happening is he also is going to have to compete with minutes. Like he's probably going to be their starter from day one, but they ain't going to be playing him 35, 40 minutes a night. Kevon Looney's going to get playing time. Marquise Chris is going to get playing time. They still going to run out small lineups. So he's going to have to really earn his minutes. Anything beyond 20, 25 minutes, he's going to have to earn it. LaMelo's going to get the opportunity every night to wow you. So that's a lot of times that's what draws the fan, uh, the voters in and like, oh, that guy should be the guy. He has less talent to work with. He's putting on a highlight show every night. He's must see TV. He's the guy we're paying attention to. Wiseman 12 and 10 is, is nice. Don't get me wrong. But unless it's like a, like a crazy 12 and 10, if it's a quiet 12 and 10 every night, it ain't going to be enough to wow the people. You better hope he comes in and does better than his brother did his rookie year. I, LaMelo's better than his brother was. I don't mean he's going to come in and, and, and play better than, the, than his brother because I think he is. He's still got a, still got a lot of a lot of pressure on 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 him as well. And they're going to be a losing team. So I don't know how crazy it is. If Lamelo shoots it better than he did in the NBL, uh, he has a chance to be really good. <laughs> well, he got he's, a he's gonna, they, he's gonna be saying he got a broken jump shot as well. He's gonna be better. Like I said, we we love comparing Lamelo because of the last name to his brother. I like kid, Lonzo. I think he's still gonna be all right. I, I think Lonzo's a solid point guard in the league. He he's never he may never live up to the hype that his father created, but that doesn't take away from him being a solid player. But Lamelo been his playing father got two. Two sons in the top three. That Crazy. Top right? three. And and listen, LaMelo been playing against grown men since he was 15 years old. I don't think he's gonna be scared of the NBA moment. I don't think he's gonna be he's gonna he's gonna shake at the opportunity to go head to head against some of the best guards in the league. He's not gonna be he's not gonna be scared of the moment, but he also was not playing competition nowhere near what he's about to face. Cause that neither did anybody kids. neither did anybody right. else. None of these kids, yeah. none of these James. <laughs> We we call it you calling James Wiseman a potential rookie of the year. He played two games in college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's, like we don't we don't know what we getting from James Wiseman. We're going off the the assumption of what he was supposed to be in college, but we didn't even get to see him in college. Yeah, we ain't seen much of Melo either. It's not like he was over there going crazy. He was but in a, that, a that Australian league. league. That was like a low. He put a better. He wasn't playing in the same league as Luca. He wasn't playing in that league. Well, Luca. Luca, Luca, Luca was playing it. right. He was playing in the same league as RJ Hampton and had better numbers than RJ. I ain't, I ain't say RJ Hampton was gonna be rookie of the year either. But but I'm, what I'm saying is you you liked RJ Hampton enough to think that he should have gone in the top 15, top 20, right? He did. What I'm saying is he went no, he went oh, 20, he, he went, went he went he went, 20, he went 20, 24, 24, 24. 24. Right. Excuse me, he went 24. But I think we all agree we thought he had enough talent to go in the top 20. So if we were, if we felt his talent was strong enough to go in the top 20 and we feel he's going to be a solid pro, what's stopping us from thinking that the same thing of LaMelo? They played in the same league and LaMelo was LaMelo a has a higher upside. Had a different, different level of exposure than RJ Hampton did as well. They played in the same league. It doesn't matter. His name is is expo exposure enough. You, LaMelo's play. We've been talking So about so Trip, are you not a believer in LaMelo? I'm not saying we're not a believer, but I'm just talking about rookie of the year. Who I think is going to be rookie of the year. Who are you not? Who are you not a believer? Right, but that's what I'm asking. That's what I want to know. That's a that's a crazy question, right? Yeah, that is. I got. I got. I got. <laughs> not because you know. Believer in Melo, I think. I think Lamelo will be good. I'm just. I'm just talking about me thinking that Wiseman will be a better candidate for rookie of the year than Lamelo will be. But that's not. To, that's not to say I think Melo is going to go in and be whack because I. I like me. That's another guy I had on my on my team in in, in 2K. I know, but what, what I'm saying to you, Trip, is right. When it comes, we know when it comes to these type of awards, people in the voters specifically are enamored with the flashy guy. If if Wiseman is in Golden State and he's putting up 19 and 12, that's different. But 12 and 10 is not going to be enough to wow the people to give him rookie of the year. He's going to have to be more impactful on that team because the first thing. Up? What happened? What is Lamelo putting up? Is he putting up a double double? I don't think. If, so. If Lamelo, if Lamelo, if Lamelo's in Charlotte, averaging seventeen and eight, on a team that has far less talent than Golden State, that's more oh, impactful than twelve and ten oh, when you're the fourth option. I don't think he's he's averaging seventeen. And eight. I, you I, ask me what you ask me what do I think he's he's going to do? He's going to have the ball in his hands all the time. He's going to have a high usage rate. He is, and I still can't see him averaging seventeen points, eight assists a game. I'm sorry, I can't see that. Okay, 
they, they don't even have enough talent around him to say he's going to average eight assists a game. Like I just, I just don't think he has enough scores around him. To well, they got to score at least. I, well, I, at least I, they're going to score like eighty points, right? I think it'll probably somebody got to get those assists. So maybe like 12, 13, and five, as opposed. He's to gonna have. He's maybe. gonna have. He's gonna have one of the highest usage rates we've seen for any rookie, similar to John Morant last year. He ain't no John Morant. I didn't say it was John Morant. I'm saying he's going to have that similar usage rate. Yeah, the ball is going to be in his hands. I think Eric's all point is that he might not necessarily be the best rookie, but he'll have the best chance to win rookie of the year because what? of the usage rate and the flash. Right. Because again, look, look at the landing spot. They have a lack of talent. He is the show. He's the guy everybody's coming to see. Not Gordon Haywood, even though they're paying him 120 million. They're coming to see LaMelo. And the ball is going to be in his hands all game for at least 35 minutes a night. He's not coming off the court anything less than 35 minutes a night. On the flip side, we we don't even know if Wiseman's going to get to 30 minutes a night. I mean, if that's the case, then we should probably be looking at Killian Hayes more than that. Well, Killian you, you, has... You, wait, you like Killian over LaMelo? Well, I'm just saying, if we're talking about usage rate and how much he's going to have the ball... He's not, though, because Derrick Rose is still their lead guard. Derrick Rose... Oh, back to New York? D-Rose? No. Why is that? Why well, I wouldn't go that far. He didn't even. No. Actually, he did. He did okay in New York. Did, no, he didn't. He bailed out on us. And he was okay. He did. Yeah, but his numbers was good though in New York. He was when he averaging like uh, seventeen a game for the Knicks. He wasn't that good. But at, looking back on it, I understand why. I know he was dealing with some things. But um, Detroit is is. I don't even. I don't know if if Killian Hayes is, is even ready to really be an impactful player this year. Well, I well, think he's more of a project. He's going to have that, that similar usage rate as well. Who? Halliburton for, for Sacramento. No, he's not because oh, De'Aaron Fox. De Aaron. Is yeah, he's got De'Aaron. He's still got Buddy Hill. It's a good situation for him. They're they, they going to move. Want to move. Tyrese on. could play off the ball. He was, he was a great spot of shooting. <laughs> right. And he could he does a lot of things well, so he can fill in a lot of gaps. A lot there's of no other young guard who's going to get the usage rate and the, and the freedom that LaMelo's going to get. There's no other rookie guard. Let me ask you this, Eric. Who's a better basketball player right now, Tyrese or LaMelo? Right now? Yeah. Tyrese is more, much more solid than LaMelo is. Yeah. He's a better shooter. Every, everything. Yeah. What happened? He's a better shooter. Than, oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a better shooter, but again, it... But, but I mean, it, I, it could be... Tyrese better. is one of the better spot-up shooters in the whole draft. Right. As I'm Tyrese, saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Tyrese, be, has, Tyrese has parts of his game that are better than LaMelo, but LaMelo has parts of his game that are better than Tyrese. Yeah, they got different strengths and weaknesses. The thing is, though, that that we, the thing that LaMelo does a lot better than him, Tyrese is still pretty good at, like, and that's playmaking. The the only they're, they're actually their weakness is actually the same. They're both not ISO scorers. You don't think Melo is a better passer though? He is, but that's definitely not a weakness for Tyrese. Right. Tyrese he's is not, a very very good passer. Yeah, so it's yeah. like it's a difference between maybe being. Great and really good. Lame Lamelo's a special passer. He has special type vision. Uh, Tyrese is a very, very good passer. So I think that's the difference. That's why MJ should have worked on signing some kind of a big man as opposed to Gordon Hayward and spending all that much money on Hayward. He should have probably found a big man that Lamelo could just kick the ball to. Well, they they just don't have. You could tell they don't have a, a plan in place um, for what they're gonna do. Because uh, I was actually coming out of retirement. Wait, are they still signing Lavar too? <laughs> If they, if they, I, I just again, they, I don't think they have much of a plan in place. They just took the best available player at the time, but they, I don't think they know what they're doing over there. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Again, that's why I said just because you're the goat as a player does not mean you're going to be the goat as a as a GM, as a coach, or as an owner. That's two different things, and we saw that because. Phil Jackson is looked upon as probably the greatest coach of all time or arguably the greatest coach of all time. He did not have a good run as GM. though. It just doesn't always pan out that way. So I, I hope Jordan gets it together because I, I would like to see Jordan be successful as an owner or, you know what I'm saying? But he just, he just hasn't had that type of success. And it's been bad ever since, uh, man, it's been bad for a long Ever since, what's the, what's the, what's the big man? That they shipped out to LA, um, uh, came out of high school. That so, went, uh, Kwame, there you go. Yeah, it's been bad since Kwame Brown. That I mean, that was 
that's that was that was Jordan. Bro, we're yeah. not doing we're not we're not doing Kwame Brown right now. Like shouts to Kwame, man. I he maybe yeah. listens to combos court, but we're not we're not doing that right now. Yeah, that was that was it was just <laughs> a bad that, situation. But that's what that's where it started from for, with Jordan being like a bad and upper brash. Like that's when it started from the from that draft pick right there. It was like it, it's been downhill from there. Like I I don't see any moves. I mean, this was actually I think it was a good pickup draft on Lamelo Ball, but as far as the whole construction of the team, there is none. So I don't like I don't even like how how long is it going to take to actually get a playoff team right now with the way the roster is constructed? How many years away are they from making the playoffs? Right. Uh, I would I would say at least at least four. Because I just I just I just don't see the cap flexibility to, to go get the impactful players. I like Devontae Graham. I like LaMelo. That's I like I, those like, two pieces. All I know is that OKC is prepared for the future. Well, OKC yeah, plans okay. are holding their own draft. <laughs> OKC is going to hold their own draft one year. It's going to be a year where they got oh, one through 10. That's crazy, <laughs> right? That's crazy. We got yeah, they, you know, the draft workout is going to be in their gym for yeah. everybody. Yeah. Well, yeah. Just, just come on. Let's go five. The combine. The combine is going to be in OKC. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say this, though, I, because uh, New Orleans is trying to position themselves similar to that, too, with a bunch of picks. But OKC, you know, it's, it's good to see it on paper, but it's only a matter of time before you actually got to actually hit a home run with that draft pick or make the big trade. Because remember, a couple of years ago, Boston had a bunch of draft picks and it never turned out to what they thought it was going to be. So it's only but so long as valuable. Well, at least with New Orleans, they have a good young nucleus to go in addition with those picks. OKC, we still, like, they're pretty much basing everything they do off of what they'll get in those picks as opposed to New Orleans who already has Zion and Brandon Ingram and, and a couple of other, they got Lonzo still who are all young guys who have potential to be a lot better. Well, okay, see, we, we, it's just a wait and see kind of thing. It's just like, all right, you got all these draft picks, but you pick the wrong guys and it don't matter how many draft picks you got if you're picking the wrong guys. Yeah. But listen, we are we are running low on time. Yo, combo, we always go over time whenever you come on the show, bro. That means it's good conversation. Oh, that's Absolutely. a fact. Listen, we I, hey, listen, you you welcome to come through anytime and rock out with us. Uh, really quick, let me shout out the sponsors though. Uh, Kmart, the Rosado Firm, Petro Home Services, uh, Soundview Liquors. We appreciate you guys as always. Make sure that you guys are following us on all our social media platforms. The website is realfansrealtalk.com. If you are not in the New York City area and you can't watch the show uh, on Thursday nights, you can watch it from anywhere in the world on realfansrealtalk.com. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash realfansrealtalk. Uh, Instagram, Twitter at realfansalk. YouTube.com forward slash for the fans productions. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because that's where you get the exclusive interviews. Yeah, everybody that comes on here, they're not as professional as Combo and they use language that we can't just put on the live show on TV. So you gotta subscribe to that YouTube channel and um, make sure you guys are also subscribed to all our affiliate podcasts, Real Fans, Real Talk podcast, Shooting the Shit podcast, of course, the Sanchez show, and make sure that you are locked into Combo's court as well. It's one of the better podcasts out there and I don't just be dropping people's podcasts if I really don't feel that way about their podcast. Like I won't say that. I won't shout the stuff out if I don't feel like it's appreciate that. Appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? So make sure y'all locked in with combos court as well. Oh and um shout out to shooting to uh, excuse, sophisticated mind, excuse me. They got the they got the new joints and the new cups. That's how I'm getting my drink on right now. Out of the new cups they got, you guys can also get you a cup if you need one. Um, it's got both sides got the design on it too. It's a beautiful brain here on both sides. Shameless plug on my behalf, but that's what I do when I have the cup in my hand. So I might as well just do it like I'm doing it for TV because I am doing it for TV. But uh, combo, let us know, man. Anything you got um, new going on right now, or you know, what I'm saying what can we expect coming out from from the combos court. Well, as you said, Combos Court, thanks for that, man. I really appreciate you uh, supporting the podcast. Uh, Combos Court, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, wherever you listen to Combos Court. You can find me on Instagram at 12 Combo. That's O-N-E-T-W-O, C-O-M-B-O, uh, Combos Court on Twitter. Uh, guys, thanks for having me, man. It's really always fun talking basketball with you guys. Um, thanks a lot, man. That's all I got to say. 
we can't talk basketball and, and, and break down this draft without without you, bro. I'll having you on. Oh, man. appreciate that, man. As soon as, I, as soon as the draft went up, and in my mind, I'm like, nah, we gotta have a basketball guy with us for this. And there's only two people that I would have brought on for that. One of them was you. And I didn't even I didn't call the other person anyway, but you know, <laughs> okay. He was the first option. So so wait, you're saying I'm top two, but I'm not two. I got you. Basically. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, right now, and I didn't make the call to the other person. So it's not like That's funny. I called him and they wasn't available. And I was like, all right, let me get cut. Nah. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. So we gotta start, we gotta start working on the 2021 draft. So let's start thinking about that soon. That's a fact. Definitely a fact. Uh, final thought, Eric. Uh just keep tuning in. We appreciate the support, man. Yes, sir. And um for myself, man, just make sure y'all y'all stay tuned in to what we're doing. We got a whole lot of new uh, stuff coming out. We got some new clothes that we're going to be dropping within the next couple of weeks. So make sure you guys are locked into everything that we have going. Uh, with that being said, for myself, Trip Young, Legend in Two Games, Eric Sanchez, and our guest from Combo's Court, Combo himself. Appreciate you as always, my brother. We up out of here. Peace. 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 Live from the camp. Live. Bye, the camp. Uh-huh. This is... Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought.